The areas of the body that have bacteria growing on them include the skin, mucous membranes, upper respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, the outer opening of the urethra, the external genitalia, the vagina, the external air canal, and the external eye. So I'm going to leave a list of all the bacteria common for each part of the body, as well as any information that I bring up in this video that is not on the board, as well as the sources for this video, as well as sources for um, good probiotics. Okay, so the largest uh, site of bacteria living on our body is the large intestine, where we have trillions of bacteria living in our large intestine followed by the mouth and small intestines, which have billions of bacteria living on us. In, uh, again, the small, in, small intestines in the mouth. Okay, so probiotics, the two main families of probiotics include lactobacilli and bifidobacterium. Now, lactobacilli largely populate the small intestine, and bifidobacteria largely populate the colon. Now, collectively, Probiotics help with peristalsis. They also help us break down lactose by producing the enzyme lactase. Probiotics also produce fatty acid chains, one being butyric acid, which is the main fuel for colon cells. Now, probiotics also produce biotin and vitamins B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, B9, vitamin K, and vitamin A. They uh, excuse me, probiotics also can produce lactic acid, which helps us digest and absorb the um, minerals such as calcium, copper, um, iron, magnesium, and manganese. Now, E. coli produces vitamin K for us, and it also produces a protein that helps break down salmonella and shigella. Lactobacillus creates an acidic environment, which helps prevent the growth of candida, and it also lowers the risk of getting infections in the vagina. Now, we also have commensal bacteria living on our body as well, and commensal bacteria re really neither harm nor help the body in any way, so they live mostly on dead skin and waste. Now, both commensal and probiotics both help prevent the overgrowth of harmful microbes. However, if our bodies um, deviate in, out of homeostasis too much, commensal bacteria can actually become parasitic where they start breaking down our body for, um, to live. So again, commensal bacteria can become parasitic if our body's environment and changes, changes too much, and these commensal bacteria, again, can start breaking down our body um, rather than just living harmlessly on our waste and dead skin. Okay, anyways, bacterial flora are influenced by age, diet, hygiene, drugs, hormones, sugar, steroids, birth control, antibiotics, stress in our environment. <clears throat> okay, uh, newborns are initially colonized with streptococci, staphylococci, and lact uh, lactobacilli as the newborn passes through the mother's vagina. Now, if the newborn is breastfed, their large intestines are colonized with bifidobacterium. And if the newborn is bottle fed, they are likely the large intestine, excuse me, is likely colonized with lactobacilli, enteric step, excuse me, enteric streptococci and staphylococci. Now, bifidobacterium um, helps pr pr protect, excuse me, the infant from intestinal pathogens by breaking down sugars into acids. So again, if the newborn his large intestine is colonized with bifidobacterium from breastfeeding. The um, bifidobacterium is going to turn sugars into acids and protect the infant from intestinal pathogens. Okay, so those are probiotics and commensal bacteria. Now moving on to yeast. So we have a beneficial yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. However, we have an opportunistic pathogen in candida, which is a yeast. <clears throat> now, um, excuse me, an opportunistic pathogen is a, 
pathogen, in this case candida, that can cause disease in a host if the host becomes unhealthy. So if you are healthy, you are unlikely to suffer from an infection from candida. However, if you, for some reason, become unhealthy, candida is likely to create an infection in your body. Okay, so candida grow in the urinary tract, large intestines, rectum, and oral cavity. And they can cause infection in the mouth, pharynx, vagina, skin, the alimentary canal, which is the gastrointestinal tract, as well as the lungs and internal organs. Now, symptoms of a candida infection include gas, bloating, PMS, depression, mood swings, migraines, eczema, fatigue, yeast infections, and arthritis. <clears throat> now, some ways that we can prevent a candida infection is with lactobacilli. Lactobacilli produces hydrogen peroxide. It is a hydrogen peroxide that can kill candida. Garlic is also a good way to prevent um, a candida infection. Iodine, a magnesium deficiency can induce a candida infection. Caprylic acid, oleic acid, so coconut oil and um, olive oil. Biotin, grapeseed extract, probiotics, beta carotene, uh, mare and pau di arco are all ways to prevent a candida yeast infection. Now, when the yeast start to die off, they experience an event called a Herxheimer reaction or a die off reaction. And what happens is the candida release these protein fragments and endotoxins into our bloodstream. Now, symptoms of a Herxheimer reaction include nausea, headaches, swollen glands, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, joint and muscle pain, elevated heart rate, chills, body itch, hives, rash, sweating, and vaginal infection.